In this video, we'll go through the basic steps for setting up a Delta Delta CT plate in various real-time PCR software packages, with the idea that this data will later be imported into Data Assist for analysis. Now, we don't have time to show this process for every version of Applied Biosystems software, so I'll be covering the most common ones, including the VS7, which is very similar to the Step 1 and 7500 platforms, the 7900 HT, version 2.3 and later, and the Open Array QPCR system. Data Assist can accommodate multiple export file types, including the ones you see here. If the real-time software version you're working with appears on this list, but isn't covered in this video, please consult your real-time user manual for directions on properly setting up a Delta Delta CT plate. Let's start by looking at the VS7, version 1.1. From the home page, click on Experiment Setup. Next, answer a few simple questions. We'll pretend we're running a 96-well block. Next, we need to choose Comparative CT, or Delta Delta CT, as the experiment type. And we'll say we're doing TACMAN Chemistry in fast mode. Go to the left under Experiment menu and select Define. Manually enter the names of the targets and samples by first clicking on New until you have the correct number of blank spaces, and then type the names into each space. Be sure that the reporter and quencher are correct. The sample section works exactly the same. We'll just use a couple of names for this demonstration. Untreated and treated. Ignore this section for analysis settings since we're going to identify our reference sample and our endogenous control in Data Assist. The next step is to assign the assays and samples to the plate map. To do that, go to Assign. Select wells containing each assay and click in the box next to the assay name. Assigning samples works exactly the same. Select wells, then click. Once assay and sample names are all assigned, go to Run Method and confirm that the cycling parameters are correct. If they are, save the file. Go to Run under the Experiment menu and Start Run. That's the manual process for a run using individual assays. Let's see the same process for TACMAN Array products, either cards or plates, since the workflow is more automated. From this screen, choose Array Card Block as your instrument block type. As before, choose Comparative CT as the experiment type. Next, take the disk that shipped with the Array product and stick it into the computer disk drive. Go to File, Import Plate Setup. Browse to My Computer, and then to the disk drive icon. Select the file containing the letters SDS and import. As you can see, the gene names get added to the assay list automatically. And if we go under Assign, you can also see that the assay names have been added to the correct wells. Now all we have to do is assign sample names. This procedure should be familiar. Under Define, we can enter between 1 and 8 sample names, depending on how many we loaded. Then, back under Assign, we simply select wells containing each sample and click the appropriate box. I won't cover the setup procedure in detail for the Step 1 and 7500 family of instruments since the newest software versions are so similar to the VS7, but I will mention two small differences. First, you'll want to click on Advanced Setup from the home screen to kick things off. Second, when it comes time to add assay and sample names to specific wells, you'll find that there is no assign listed under the experiment menu. Instead, after you create target and sample names, you'll need to click on the Assign Targets and Samples tab. From that point on, the procedure is essentially the same as on the VS7. Just remember, regardless of what real-time instrument you're using, always select Delta Delta CT as the experiment type, and add both assay and sample names to the wells. Let's look at how to set up a Delta Delta CT run in the 7900. I'm working with software version 2.4, but older versions work similarly. To begin, 
go to File, New, and choose Delta Delta CT as the experiment type. I also need to select the correct container type. Let's pretend for now that this is a 96 well plate. Now click OK. We need to tell the software what assays are on the plate. To do so, click Add Detector. Now I'll just highlight my control gene, beta actin, and using the control key, also select a target gene, TNF alpha. I copy these to the plate document and click Done. And there they are. I now need to add these to their correct spots on the plate map to the left. Select the wells that contain beta actin and then go back to the detector list and click the Use box next to that gene. Beta actin is now assigned to those wells. And even though we'll be labeling this information later in Data Assist, just note that you can designate your endogenous control here under the Task pull-down menu. Select the wells with TNF alpha and click its Use box. Now for sample names. I'm running each sample gene combination in triplicate, so I highlight every well with my first sample in it. I next go over to Sample Name, activate the box, and type the sample name in. I'll then repeat this process for the remaining wells. Go under Instrument to be sure that the run conditions are correct. Assuming they are, save the file by going to File, Save, and entering a unique file name. Navigate to the folder of choice and click Save. Next, with the plate loaded in the machine, hit the Real-Time tab, where, if I had an instrument connected to my computer, which I don't, I'd be able to click the Run button to initiate cycling. And that's it for a regular setup. Just quickly, if I were using a TACMAN Array product, the setup process would be a little different as it was for the VIA-7. I'd still begin the same way, but instead of 96 well as my container type, I'd want to choose TACMAN Low Density Array. Just as before, there's no need to manually enter all my gene names. Instead, I'll simply insert the disk that shipped with the cards in the computer disk drive, go to File, Import, Navigate to the disk drive, and select the file containing the letters SDS. When I click Import, every gene that's pre-spotted on my array card magically appears in the appropriate location in the plate map. Now all I have to do is enter sample names by selecting entire rows in the plate map, or even the entire card, and then entering the appropriate sample names here. I'll quickly run through the setup procedure for the Open Array qPCR system, though the process is described in detail starting on page 51 of the User Guide. With the disk that shipped with the Open Array cards inserted into the disk drive, simply click on Cycle. Next, click on the Locate File button next to position number 1 and navigate to the appropriate drive. Select the .tpf file corresponding to the first plate you set inside the cycler, and open. The serial number of that plate will automatically populate this window. If you have more than one plate loaded, add the other serial numbers. Otherwise, add sample names by hitting the Edit button. This opens the Sample Information window. Here, you can either manually enter sample names into the spaces corresponding to individual subarrays, or you can import a .csv file containing the information for all the samples on the plate. Navigate to the correct setup file, select it, and click Open. Hitting OK assigns sample information to the .tpf assay file that was imported earlier. Once information for all plates has been added, Click Cycle to begin the run. And that's it for the setups. In the next video, we'll see how to combine multiple plates into a single real-time study, as well as how to export the resulting CT data in a format that Data Assist can recognize.